Welcome back to Logic 101, I'm William Spaniel. In this lecture, we're going to be looking at what else we'll be covering in the remainder of this course. There are specifically eight topics, starting with logical operations. Logical operations is essentially the language of logic. It's going to teach us how to identify simple sentences and convert them into the logical notation that we need in order to manipulate that logic later. So, for example, this is the St. Louis Cardinals winning the World Series block of text that we saw in the last lecture, and we're going to be learning how to take big blocks of text like that and convert it into something much simpler and something much easier to work with, such as the four bullet points that you see at the bottom of your screen now. What's really remarkable about using logical operations like this is that we can take everything that we need to know about the big block of text and convert it into something much smaller and still not lose anything logically relevant to the argument. So it's going to be really awesome and really useful to take big blocks of text and convert it into something much smaller. From there, we're going to be going toward our goal of proving things. This is the goal of the course is to prove things, right? We want to make logical inferences based off of some premises, and that's essentially proving that things are true. And so starting with topic two, we're going to be looking at truth tables. Truth tables are an algorithmic way of figuring out whether things are true or false based off of premises. So in one way, this is very easy to work with because you know exactly what you need to do in order to go from point A to point B. However, what we'll eventually see is that when the number of premises grows really, really large, truth tables become very unwieldy. It requires a ton of work to go from point A to point B. And so while it's easy in the sense that you know what you're doing, it's hard in the sense that it's going to take you forever to do it. So eventually we're going to want to get off of truth tables and learn how to prove things in a little bit more direct of a way. And to do that, we need to first learn how to make inferences. And this is going to be a two-stage two stage process. In topic three, we're going to learn replacement rules. Replacement rules are rules that allow us to convert one premise into another premise, which is identical, but logically constructed differently. And this is going to be useful because it's going to allow us to manipulate things a little bit more easily in the logical proofs that are going to follow. And then the fourth topic is going to look at rules of inference. Rules of inference take two different premises and show that something must be true as a result of those premises. So you take two premises and you get a third thing as a result of those premises. So for example, in modus tollens, if, if P then Q is true and not Q is true, then it follows that not P must be true as well. These are rules of inference. We'll be covering them in topic four. These are really neat and really cool. But once we've learned the replacement rules and the rules of inference, we're going to start applying them to proofs. Topic five is going to be a direct proof. And in this proof that we're looking at right here, we see four premises which actually correspond to the block of text about the St. Louis Cardinals and the World Series. And in these proofs, the premises are going to be given to us, and the proof is going to ask us to show that something must be true as a result of those premises. And we can see on the right that the thing that we have to prove here is that C must be true as well. And so we can take the rules of inference and replacement rules and go step by step and show that C must be true. For example, here we see that we can show that not S is true and then not W is true and then C must be true as a result of all of that. We're going to learn how to do this. We're going to learn how to think through these things. This is really cool and really important and it will be topic five of this course. Now, direct proofs sometimes will be really easy and sometimes will be not so easy and it might actually be easier to prove things in a more indirect way. So the first way of going about doing proofs without the direct method is to do conditional proofs. In a conditional proof, what we need to conclude is if something is true, then something else must be true as a result. In this case, if S, then R. You can see that on the right side of your screen. And when we do a conditional proof, we're going to assume that S is true and then show that if S is true, then R must be true as a result, given the premises that we have. And so that's what a conditional proof is. It allows us to take if-then statements and be able to prove these things very easily in comparison to what we'd have to do for a direct proof. Then in topic seven, we're going to learn proof by contradiction. So you can barely see this because of how big this proof is, but the first four premises that you see up there are still, again, the same St. Louis Cardinals premises that we saw from earlier, and we're still asked to show that C is true. Now, we did this in uh, topic five with the direct proofs in a much simpler way, but there are multiple ways of proving things are true. And in a proof by contradiction, we show that C must be true by showing that if not C is true, if C is false, then there's a contradiction inherent in the logical process by assuming that. So in this case, we see in row 11 that if not C is true, 
then it must be true that both R and not R are true. So in other words, R must be true and false simultaneously. That's a contradiction, which allows us to show that the original assumption was not true, which then allows us to show that C must be true as a result. Proof by contradiction is very neat and very useful. We're going to learn all about it in topic seven. And then finally, we're going to briefly apply the logical inference that we've been making to show how some informal or rather some, some informal in the way that you, you know we use language to make argumentation and that sort of thing. We're going to show that in that everyday language, people sometimes make formal mistakes in their logical reasoning. And here we're talking about affirming the consequent, which is something along the lines of if a man smoked, he died from cancer. He died from cancer. Therefore, the man smoked. This is wrong. It's a logical inference that's false. And we're going to learn how to pick up on these things and explain to someone why what they're saying is just totally not true at all and doesn't follow from their premises. So that's the overview for Logic 101. And I hope to see you next time when we start talking about logical operations. Join me then.